Hey, Into Picklers, Tony here. I wanted to do a shot breakdown for you. What I'm going to do in this video is we're going to look at a specific point that I played with some friends of mine recently here in Tampa. And what I'm going to do, this isn't a fancy point. It's not a, an Ernie or an around the post or something like that. It's just a good fundamental point where I think we can learn some different uh, aspects from the uh, point and how it was played. I would recommend that when you're in your weekly, regular weekly games and waiting for a game or waiting to get into a game, that you spend some time watching how the points develop on the court and you can, you'll be able to recognize how the points are essentially won and lost as you watch them and that'll help you improve your game. So let's get into it. Let's go ahead and break the point down. Uh, I'm going to be off screen for a few seconds here at the beginning of the video. I'm serving to Tom uh, from off the screen again. And you'll see that the serve here is going to be a good deep serve, uh, which is what you want to do here. Uh, Tom's going to do a nice job of returning here. Now I want to stop here and talk about this return for a second. There's two schools of thought here. Uh, the traditional school of thought is that the Tom's uh, return of serve should be deeper. And speaking to, with Tom about it, Tom's thinking on this particular return is that he needs to return the ball shorter because of the fact that Scott and I had been hitting some balls, uh, driving some balls hard at them. And so hitting a shorter, lower return would make it harder for us to be able to drive the ball at Hammer Tyson in our third shot. And so what's interesting about this particular return is that it shows you that there's different ways to approach the game and different ways to think about the game. The important thing here is to recognize that you can think about the game different ways. And so you can bring different strategies depending on what you see the other team doing. Here, Tom is implementing a specific strategy uh, to diffuse something that we're doing as, as opposed to just returning deep because that's the traditional type of return. From this frame, I also want you to notice Scott's preparation. You see how he has the paddle ready to come forward and execute a third shot. He does not take the paddle back, but rather brings the paddle up with a nice presentation here to execute the third shot. Then he moves forward. Notice how his weight's forward, and that's a good position for him to be in. And the paddle's open face, and he's ready to hit that ball. Let's shift our attention to Tom and Tyson here. What I want you to notice here is how Tom's moving forward. Look at Tyson shift over towards the middle to try and cover any ball that may come in the middle there. Given the fact that the ball is over on Tom's side or being hit off Tom's side, it's a great move there for Tyson to shift over towards the middle there to try and cover any action at that point. In these next series of frames, I want you to see how Scott and I start moving forward. I want you to notice how I'm looking over towards Scott uh, to see what kind of shot he's executing to determine what I'm going to do. Once I see that he executes a nice shot, we start moving forward. Both of us have our paddles up and in a basically ready position so that we can handle anything. Given the height of the ball as it crosses the net, it appears that Tom is thinking about maybe taking this one in the air and hitting it. You can see that Scott and I pause at this point because of the fact that it looks like Tom might actually take this ball in the air to hit it. You'll see that he makes the right decision and lets the ball bounce uh, because the ball wasn't really in a position that he could have hit it well there. Because it looks like Tom's going to hit the ball with pace, Scott and I have to stop now and do a split step and get ready to receive whatever shot Tom is going to hit at this point. I'll run it again so you can see it better. Even though Scott and I are doing the split step, which is the right thing for us to do at this point, the way that I moved into the court created a gap between Scott and I that's too large for us to cover and creates an opening that Tom's able to exploit. Let's look again at the error in my movement. What happens here is I take an approach that is too straight forward instead of coming in on a diagonal line towards the ball. And I'll superimpose here a rectangle to show you the area between Scott and I, an area that is simply too large for us to defend. I'll slow it down again one more time. This time I'm going to put some arrows on here. The first one will be the arrow that I moved along, which will be in a red. And then the other arrow will be the line I should have taken, which will be in a purple. One last thing I want to point out before I sign off on this video is the fact that after I got in trouble, I made another error, which is that I swung at the ball that Tom hit instead of just trying to reset it. A better shot there would have been for me to simply present the paddle uh, like a block volley or a reset and just try and get the ball into play as opposed to trying to swing at the ball and hit a winner. 